Hi hey guys, welcome to another video. So in the previous video, I kind of briefly talked about why would one use microservices. And as a reminder, this is to scale your organization. Uh, in this video, I actually want to introduce kind of benefits and well, disadvantages of using microservices per se, right? So let's dive in it. So microservice architecture, and this is a quote from um, James Lewis and Martin Fowler. So microservice architecture is an approach to developing a single application, right? As a set of small services, each running on its own process and communicating through lightweight mechanisms, right? These services are built around business capabilities and independently deployable by fully automated deployment machinery. This is a bare minimum of centralized management of these services, right? which may be written in different programming languages and use different data storage technologies. So a few things to pick up there. So there's a single application, right? Single application with small services talking to, um, as we call them, dump pipes, really. HTTP, gRPC, something simple, lightweight, not an enterprise service bus for sure. Um, the service is built around business capabilities, so the pricing service, there's a booking service, right, etc. There's an automated deployment, that's really important. So there's automated things around services which let you deploy, which let you monitor, which let you test. There is a set of infrastructure services, and typically there's an infrastructure team uh, which is focused on this part alone in the organization. Right, and automation plays a critical role actually in microservices. Right, but there's a bare minimum of centralized management, management, meaning there's actually not a like a lot of business logic anywhere else. Right, and you don't actually want business logic reside in any centralized place. So then, microservices actually, given that they're simple communication mechanisms. They can also be written in different languages, right? You can have a Python service talking to a C sharp service to talking to a Golang service, right? That's okay. That's all fine and dandy in Microsoft's world, right? Most importantly as well, each microservice might use different databases, right? So a Python uh, service might decide I want to use uh, I don't know uh, DynamoDB. Right, and then another microservice we can go. I say I want to use uh, uh, maybe MySQL for my data storage or Redis. Right, doesn't matter. It should not matter. So let's go through a few of characteristics of microservices. Right. So typically, this application componentization through independent services. Right. So as you had in any program of large scale, you have components. Right. You have modules. In other words, um, in microservice architecture, those components are typically services, which have network calls. Right? Then services are organized around business capabilities. Again, pricing, booking service, think of those things. Um, services communicate through dump pipes, HTTP REST, MQTT, gRPC, things like this. Simple standard, cross-platform typically. There's decentralized governance. There's a CI, source control management, analytics, monitoring, all now known as observability. All of that is decentralized and there's typically separate team managing it. Data management is decentralized. There's no one single huge DB. There's many databases. Infrastructure is automated and often virtualized, right? Often you run those microservices on a virtualized infra, maybe on Kubernetes, which runs on top of bare metal or even virtual machines. Anyway, all of the stuff to deploy a microservice should be completely automated, right? And services are typically designed for failure in scalability, right? So that each indep independent service can scale up and scale down as needed, right? And on the cloud is typically Elastic. So let's say at peak hour at 5 p.m. and then your services, all the services should scale, right? 
Uh, and then that kind of leads me to why uh, microservices are really scale of a team uh, as opposed to scaling an application because it's actually easier to scale a single application um, than a hundred microservices, right? Because each and every microservice need to scale as well. So it's hundred times more effort. Right, uh, so one is the example of microservices at just eat. Um, again, simple example we took from internet. So the billion services, billion team managing, billion services, order services, different team analytics, different team notifications, different team, and they all all those microservices talk to each other. Right. Um, now let's talk about this monolith versus microservice. Typically. Um, the recommendations always start with a monolith, small team, just get the product out right, as quickly as possible. And in the monolith, you'll be much more productive, right? Because typically when you start, you don't have a uh, thousand engineers, 10,000 engineers. So it doesn't justify the expense. Mo uh, microservices are complex, right? So there's more effort maintaining them. You need to automate everything. You need to um, have solid contracts. You need this and that. So the if you start with microservices and in this graph, you'll have things like, uh, let's say this complexity really, right? And the productivity. So monoliths are typically less, uh, as, as they're less complex, you're more productive in them, right? Because when you think about it, well, if just two people writing code, there's no point having 10 microservices. But is complexity of overall application and remember, it's a single application we're talking about for microservices, typically. Um, as the complexity scale like increases, the productivity, overall productivity of your team will drop down, right? Because if you have 100 engineers working in the same code base without any modules, it's going to be tough. It's not going to work. However, um, Microservices, the tipping point here, where Microsoft, moving to microservices makes sense. Now you can transition from your team of 50 engineers, which start running into issues, to a team of 10,000 engineers. And without sacrificing productivity, because each and every team will work independently from each other, only based on contracts. Right, so benefits really are quite strong for large teams. So you inverse in Conway's law. Um, so the architecture like, of the application should actually lead to organizational structure as opposed to the traditional way of um, kind of technology specific teams leading to the architecture. So this is what this is the key power of microservices. Now you can say, hey, I will arrange my architecture in a microservices and that is how my companies, it, like my company is gonna talk to each other, right? really. I will have solid contracts between teams, each team run independently or more or less independently. There'll be meetings to agree on those contracts and we move forward this way, right? There's strong module boundaries because now you have a network calls it's not easy to take a dependency on someone else's code. Um, you have independent deployments. So a uh, billion can deploy separately to orders, right? Uh, so there's more agility. There's more deployments happening at the same time in the same app. Um, you don't have a monolithic deployment cycle. You don't have like a Friday's deployment, right? Or all done deploying Fridays. That's typically good advice as well. Um, and this technological diversity, you have more languages, things like this. But it comes at costs, right? So the business logic is not distributed, so it's harder to think about program. Well, in fact, distributed systems are harder to program, right? Um, the call, remote calls can be slow, there's risk of failure. So if you have very way too many microservices now now your latency increases as well right this stuff is hard um there's eventual consistency now right uh well now there's many databases how do you do transactions um how do you actually make sure data is consistent typically you have to manage eventual consistency 
right? Everyone has to. And there's operational complexity. You know, there's more, more um, services. You have to have the architecture or well, infrastructure. You have to have a team for operating those things, right? Um, and make sure you have monitoring. The organization needs to be quite mature to get there. So that's about it. Please subscribe and uh, leave your questions below. I'll try to answer them. Thank you.